Hi guys, D. Aluvalia, Visa Simply, once again, all right. all right. What I would like to talk about with you guys today is, okay, if you now, okay, this is how I see it. If you're listening to my video, that means you are keen or interested in getting a permanent residency or eventually getting an Australian passport. That's why you would be listening to this video. Otherwise, I don't see, or you want to see the difference between, you know, what, what it takes to become a permanent resident or get an Australian passport comparing to other countries, maybe, especially when we talk about Australia, we can, you know, you want to compare with Canada, US, UK, I, I guess these are the main, main competitors, or maybe a little bit of New Zealand, little bit of it, to be honest. No, I don't really find it a competitor to be really in the main game as of, Australia, Canada, or in US now, or UK, UK is also far of like kind of falling behind in immigration in the last few years. So guys, okay, this is what we want to talk about it. Now, if you are, if you're really, really looking into getting Australian permanent residency, and now we are in year 2022, 2023, so this is what it is guys. In this physical year, basically, it's... 195,000 migrants who are going to get permanent residency, okay? So now, when it's out of this 195,000, so the purpose of the video is to get you the understanding that how what are the different ways how immigrants become permanent resident in Australia. Then, eventually, once you understand the different ways, and then probably you need to understand how each and every category work. So the whole idea behind this is that you are more informed. So you can make a better decision about yourself. Now, honestly, it's what, you know, it's 20 past 10 here. We are in Melbourne. I'm with Jake. I love him. And we are on the road. In next 20-30 days, we're going to produce 30-40 videos. He's with me. And even when you're going to call the office guys, you're going to find him. Alright, so he's killing with me. Alright, we're having a good time. So, yeah, it is. And we love making lovely content for you guys. Alright, so let's look. Let's let's come back to now just of it. So, if you look at it in this physical year, and like, let's look at the last physical year as well. So, I've got the numbers for you. So, the... The, the most significant dis um, change or difference in this physical year is because last year we were locked down. I remember I was in Goa this time last year and everything was closed down and yeah, there was no business. So what we were doing is in the last physical year, the last government, what they were introduced is like, you know, yeah, there were bigger numbers in terms of in last physical year, under the family visas, there were 80,300 people who got their permanent residency, but in this year it's only gonna be 50 to 500. So that's one bigger difference. And the significant difference is for people in skill categories. And that's basically where I'm gonna really, what I'm gonna talk about today, and I'm really gonna concentrate on this, the skill category, and that's where the major difference is. In the last physical year, if you look at it, there was 79, roughly 80,000 seats. And this year, we're looking at 142,000 seats. So, you know, to be precise, 39,600 and 42,400. And we, if you look at the numbers, so we're talking about now. So, these are the two ways. So, either when people, so this year, whoever going to get moment residency, this is how they're going to get it. Either they're going to get it through skills so if you really look at it i don't know the skill comes up till skill visas come up till here so which is employer sponsored skill independent regional state territory so when we say employer sponsor we're talking about 186 186 generally speaking three years of work experience skill assessment six each in english employer Occupation and medium to long term list. That's 186 guys. Skill independent, 189 visas, the medical one, we all want that. And I love that. And probably I also got that 
but I got my permanent residency long, long back. All right. Okay. But I always tell. So, so see the numbers. Significant difference. That's why we can see the numbers coming in here as well. But I always, always, I tell everyone, don't depend on this visa. Love it if you get it. That's fine. But yes, the numbers have changed. That's why we like you know last two, three rounds, whatever we have seen, big numbers coming in, just because of that. And also, I don't know if you guys know, there's also, a, in 189, there's also a category for New Zealanders, which is, in my view, the numbers are going down because that law has been changing. I would talk about that video some other time. I don't want to get there. And then we are talking about the regional visa. So basically, it is 191s, 194. So in a nutshell, Regional visas when we are talking about, we are living in a regional area, we are not living in Sydney, Melbourne or Brisbane. Okay, I'm sure you guys understand that. And then the state territory nomination visas, we are talking about 190 and all. Alright guys, okay. So that's skill visas. That's one way how people migrate to Australia. Then business innovation investment visas. So if you, in a nutshell, you should be having a successful running business in your country if you have that and if you're planning to migrate to australia and even if you're age above 45 that's something you're looking for but generally speaking yeah you're looking for to invest few hundred thousand dollars here and you're looking basically you would be already running your businesses successfully and moving so that's but i really don't want to talk about this category today i will specifically discuss i do a lot of work in business uh, innovation and investment visas but i would talk about this visa some other time and then it comes to the family visas then when we talk about the family visas it's mainly the number is the partner visas and again um, if you happen to have an Austrian partner who's willing to sponsor you then definitely that's another category you're looking for and that's also a very big number if you look at it uh, uh, partner visas that's how it connects here yeah in the last physically it was only to 300 this year it, it has come down to 4000 uh, 40500 but it doesn't really really make makes a difference because uh, i think the most important thing is if you if your partner is here in australia and then you apply for your partner visa it really does not make a difference as long as the relationship lasts I think the most <laughs> difficult part is this to last the relationship. It roughly takes four and a half years, four to four and a half years to get your permanent residency. And if you, you mess up or you fuck up within that part of it, and yeah, so you're going back or you got, you've got to find different options basically and things get rougher. So yeah, otherwise, yeah, that's a smooth visa. If uh, I always suggest my clients, if you're if the applicant, which is basically a person who's applying the partner visa in this term, you know, the sponsor is a, is Australian, your Australian partner, basically. So, yeah. So, you know, yeah. Um, I always suggest it's always better to apply for onshore because if you apply for onshore, uh, once you finish your whatever your temporary visa is or there are other part, ways to sort it out as well, uh, you know, you jump on, you get your Medicare, you get your full work right. So, you can rather than waiting offshore year, year and a half, two years, whatever, you know, it's always much, you know, yeah, you can start your family straight away. And uh, that's, that's what I like about it, like, you know, if it is onshore and of course, you know, long, um, long distance relationships, I think are much more harder to manage than being together. Uh, that's my thought anyways. And my experience of doing hundreds and hundreds of applications every year. All right, then. so this is what I wanted. To basically, in a nutshell, I wanted to talk about it. The main is now, guys. Also, before I close this video, the whole idea about this video was to giving you a gist. If you want to become a permanent resident in Australia, this is only this is these are the only ways how you can become permanent resident. Now, these are the permanent visas and there's a pathway of how to reach to these visas. I would be making videos. I would, if you really like this video and if you really want to understand how Australian immigration works and I would try to explain how each and every visa works and what are the best options. So, once you are very well informed, so you can make a better decision for yourself. So you can have a better outcome for it. That's the whole idea of it. 
So I'm gonna close on with this guys. If you like it, subscribe to my videos. I'm gonna continue continuously producing more videos and I'm gonna now started basically siphoning and you know circuitizing everything and breaking this down for you in, in the coming videos step by step. I look forward for you to see me. Bye now. Cheers. Take care. Bye bye.